I, I probably got to ask a couple questions about your current tour. Do you mind? No, no, no. So you're playing. That's on my mind. I mean, like, the solo yeah. guitar thing is, is already sort of. You know, yeah, no. Seems like a chapter that's closed, you know. But uh, I, I love it. But um, well, you you are you playing your three thirty six? Is that what you're out with? Is that? I am quite a lot. Yeah, that's that's getting the bulk of the time uh, in the the sets that we've been doing so far. But there are a few other guitars I have out with me. Um, one is um, a guitar made by Gerard Melanson, uh, mm -hmm. who's no longer with us, but made great guitars. Um, uh, I got turned on to his guitars uh, through Shane Terrio. I don't know if you know Shane, but a great guitar player. Uh, it's a it's a sort of a tell. It's a sort of a fancy sort of telly. Uh, Gerard used to make um, basically pretty stock sort of Fender style instruments, but he was a master at at sort of improving all the little details to sort of make it a special instrument and um and that one's just so versatile uh and and the unusual thing about it is it's a gibson scale i often have trouble uh, with the bending like like adjusting the bending because the same gauge string on a gibson and a telly will feel quite different it's much stiffer on the on the longer fender scale he made that one uh with a gibson scale and so the switching is seamless you know i can i can play it comfortably and i don't have to change my my touch you know for yeah you know, no so it uh, helps a lot i think you've told me in the past you play with tens is that still the case or yes that is you yeah. still play play with ten after all these tours you've done with Steely Dan, is there anything, uh, I mean, and this is kind of a crazy question, but is there anything on this tour that, that um, is different or feels different or is there anything, is there, there comfort in the, in the same stuff? I mean, how, how's it feel to be out? I mean, I know it feels great to be out in front of crowds and all that, but let's talk about the music itself. Well, the, the, I, I have to say that absolutely there is, there is something different this year and, we have uh, Adam Rogers on the second guitar. Um, and he, so we've done about four gigs only so far. But um, Adam is just a phenomenal guitar player. And uh, he had a lot of songs to learn <laughs> for this, uh, in a hurry for the tour. And I, I, uh, I felt for him because I, I once had to do that as well. But, uh, but that was like 22 years ago or something. So, um, but I, I felt his pain <laughs> and, uh, but of course he's a master musician and, and he got it together incredibly quickly. And even the first gig was just gorgeous. I mean, it's the band just is as good as I've ever heard it, you know? And, and part of that, part of that is Adam because he's, he's, he's a consummate musician. He, he, he plays beautifully with other people and his time is is superb you know so his skills are, are top notch but the uh but but of course the other factors we've been doing this with the, with mostly these same musicians for so long right. and a lot of these songs i mean the bulk of the set list every night is is stuff that i think donald feels like he has to play you know maybe 15 tunes and the other stuff gets rotated in and out you know because there's there's too many songs to play in a given night but because we've had so much time over the years with the same people playing the same music it's just it's just so comfortable and and you know everybody just gets better and better at it every year and so th that that feels really different because it used to take a you know a week or two before we i'd feel like okay now we're hitting our stride now it's, now it's really feeling like this precise beautiful machine you know but it was happening like the first night this this tour, oh man is, that that is that's incredible it's, well, you know, it really is a joy it, you know, it, i'm just having so much fun it's just unbelievable the how the accessibility uh, of that of that, yeah. of that the accessibility to the average year with that complexity is befuddling right. it's genius it's just that's a beautiful thing and, and that's a good 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 thing to uh i mean that's that's a specific thing that that makes it so unique, I think. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm as big a fan of the Beatles catalog as I am of Steely Dan catalog. But I'll tell you, um, there's no question there is there is more complexity, there's there's more of a jazz influence on the writing. And, uh, and as far as a gig to play, I mean, there's so much more uh, opportunity for a, for a soloist and for a player right. in, in Steely Dan. Well, you got and, the... You know, the horn section and yeah, I mean it's got a it's a little more like a I mean it's not a jazz gig but it no. but it's not all such a jazz fan that he he sort of he wants to sort of include opportunities for all the horn players and for 
all of us to uh, to improvise too. So there's a there's a lot of room in, in it, which which is also sort of, you know, like where do you get that? You know, where who else can you work for and get that kind of space? You know. To so the guys in the band from Night Tonight are excited, and they're they're freaking glad to be there. There's none of this. I mean, oh, yeah, I, there's, I, no, there's never a jaded, uh, right? You know, from, from anybody on this on this band. I mean, and and that's part of its magic too. I mean. I know it it would be easy for a band that had all its hits you know, really in the late seventies, you know, to it could it could be easily like a nostalgic sort of thing where it's just a ka ching for the leader, you know. Yeah. And there there are bands that of course we know that 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 operate like that. Right. I think it must be right at the top because Donald is just not doing that. And he it feels very alive for all of us every night. It uh, it feels like there's room for self-expression, but but we don't compromise the sound of the band. That, that, that's just unbelievably rare, and and yeah. I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, well, when you take probably the best pop music probably ever written, and you play it with some of the best musicians on the planet, with I mean that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 in pretty good company there, John. It's, <laughs> it's a great company, and I mean, I know. I mean, there are there are, there are like so many great uh, rhythm sections and so many great musicians, but but you know, it it doesn't get any better than what we have. It's different, but it doesn't get better. I can tell from, you that from from song from song to song, there's not a tired song in there. All those songs are stand no, up. They all stand up today. They all stand up today. I mean, as I know. Tall, I mean, they're, as tall as they they're ever are. There are a few that sort of, st in some ways, they feel like they have you know, elements of of the of their day, you know, of that mm -hmm. time, uh, like a song like "Glamour Profession" or something. It almost has a sort of, there's almost an implied sort of disco sort of uh, quality. <laughs> to the but then you start listening to the song and say, like, "Oh my God!" There's the the chord changes. It sounds yeah. like Ravel or something. You know, it's just it's it's so unusual and like. It sounds kind of weirdly through composed and I mean the melody and the chords work together, but but where did that chord progression come from? It's, yeah, it's right. just wow. It's just so wild. And that's a kind of a funny thing about Steely Dan too. It's it's sort of all sort of so nicely and politely sort of packaged, you know, that a lot of its radical element is 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 sort of easily missed, you know? But the, when you start looking at the harmony, you start trying to learn some of those tunes, you say, oh my God, there's so much going on there. Where, it holds up uh, a whole lot better than most stuff, um, you know, over time. It really just, it, it sort of really holds up. So you're using your Gaitone amps still? And, um... yeah, they're, they're, Gaitron is the Gaitron, name of the amps. I'm sorry, I'm yeah, Gaitron. U-Y-T-R-O-N. And they were designed by a guy named Guy Hedrick. That's that's why Guytron, I guess. But yeah. uh, a friend of mine, Graydon Stuckey, owns the company now and uh, kept kept my amps uh, sounding great. And uh, yeah, they're so easy to use and they're they're beautiful amps. So uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy with with those and uh, they make they make road life simple for me. Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to tell people? Anything? I just want to mention one one thing that to, to keep your eyes open. I mean, if if uh, for anybody who's uh, you know, um, enjoyed the the last record, uh, the solo guitar record called Quiet, mm -hmm. uh, which again has just a handful of those arrangements from the books. I decided to make a holiday theme CD uh, for solo guitar. Um, now I haven't uh, I haven't decided to put a book out of of the arrangements, but uh, but I bothered to do a full record's worth of uh, recording of of you know. Christmas and holiday kind of tunes. And uh, so that I'm going to try to get out by uh, maybe, you know, maybe by like sometime in November, you know, for the, for the Christmas season. And, you know, I'm hoping it'll be the, the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> to sell it so I can sell a little bit around, uh, around the holidays. But it's, uh, you know, it's very much like uh, the approach to, uh, you know, the, the solo guitar stuff on the other record, but it's, it's all sort of holiday themed stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, that, should, that's something to look for. I should probably ask about, about the Madeline tour a little bit. How, how oh. what is that yeah, like? I mean, what is that for people that don't know? What is, what is that like to, to what kind of music? Oh, she's a, a really a unique singer. Um, she's, you know, she sort of straddles jazz, folk and pop styles. Um, 
but this particular tour uh, is a tour. I think it's an anniversary of uh, of her probably best selling and maybe most well known record called Careless Love, and um, it's it's got lots of classic. Uh, you know, American standard kind of songbook type songs on it. It has probably has a Leonard Cohen hit that uh, was probably her biggest hit, "Dance Me to the End of Love." Which is a great mm. tune. And the record's a great record. And um, so we'll be playing. I'm not sure exclusively stuff from that record. We'll, we'll be we'll probably be playing everything on it. So, um, and I'm looking forward to it because it's a beautiful record. So, uh, you know, so it'll a lot of that sort of feels like 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 a sort of a medium tempo jazz thing very quiet i mean it's, it's sort of like the polar opposite in a lot of ways uh, to the steely dan gig for me uh and it's the closest thing to a jazz gig i ever get to play because it's uh you know it's i'm using mostly jazz guitar type sounds you know to the degree i can get them with my 336 you know and uh, but it's very quiet often brushes on the drums you know and it's it's usually a just a quartet behind Madeline, although she plays acoustic guitar as well. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's really fun. And I've been do, working with Madeline probably for over, I mean, probably close to 15 years now or something like that, off and on. She kept me busy on the road when I wasn't working with Steely Dan. So, uh, and uh, it's it's I'm excited to do it again because we it's been a while because uh, I hadn't well, done it had done touring with her for several years, but this will be fun. So. Well, the one thing I know for sure, if you're involved in the project, it's gonna, it's gotta be cool. Oh, well, there's great, great players. Graham Hawthorne is saying. playing drums. Yeah. Andy um, Anthony is playing keyboards. And I, Bill sure. Mooring. Yeah, I'm sure. They're all great players. I'm sure it's a great band and great, you know, great it is. arrangements and all that. Well, listen, I won't keep you anymore. I, I really appreciate, you know, you're, you're one of my favorite people to listen to. Um, you know, you just you're you're a thinking man's guitar player, and I mean you're just that guy, and and well, you, thanks. I mean I'm that I'm that guy, but but you're that guy that is you know has you know really taken it to where it could where a lot of us have dreamed to go, if you will, and I just love well, I, been, love what you do, man. I really love what you do. It's been a really rich musical life. I, I feel luckier and luckier every year that goes by. So. Uh, I'm glad I still can do some some more. So, uh. well, listen, John. Thank you, man. Um, I, I I just can't thank you enough. I wish you all the success and and, and joy and happiness and peace and and uh, enjoy your time on the road. And man, I just I just <laughs> just think the world of you. I really do. Bob Thanks. Baker with Jazz Guitar Today with John Harrington and Happy Memorial Day, 2022. We'll put a we'll put a note on this thing. So Happy Memorial Day. And thanks for sharing it with us. See you later, John. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.